Right. <clears throat> so I want to talk about closed curves first. Okay. Now, uh, first of all, uh, let, let's consider, yeah, let gamma, uh, this is a defined on the whole line, that gamma from R to Rn be a parameterized curve. Okay, this actually is a map, okay? And uh, we say that this is a periodical if, uh, if it is fine following condition, okay? Gamma is T periodical if gamma T plus capital T is always equal to gamma T for all T, little t. Okay, so T is a, T is a, is a number. It's not necessarily positive, it could be negative. Okay, and let's take a look at example. Uh, uh, for example, gamma T equals, you know, equals, um, this is the simplest example always, okay? Gamma T equals sine T equals sine T, okay? So clearly, if you put, uh, uh, yeah, 2K pi, right? K is the integer. And that is going to be, you know, just cosine T plus 2K pi and the sine T plus 2K pi, okay? So that will be cosine T and sine t, and that's true for all the t because cosine and sine are a function, uh, are a periodic function. Okay, the period is two pi, you know, that's what we learned. So here, k is the integer, okay, k is the integer, not necessarily to be positive, just any. Anyway. So you can say that this is a, a gamma is a, is a, is a, is a t k pi, uh, t k pi, uh, periodical, okay? So T is a, you know, gamma, yeah, gamma is T periodical for T to K pi, you know? So it's not unique, it's this T, okay? But of course, as we see that cosine sine, we really want to see what is a, yeah, we needed to know what is a so-called period, right? The period will be uh, defined to be the smallest possible integer such that the above uh, identity holds, okay? So the period for a periodic function, uh, periodic curve, parameterized curve, okay? is called as a period. You know, that's our uh, name, that should be the nature definition, okay? So here is a period of a closed, um, the T periodic function, P periodic function, okay, is called, uh, yeah, if, yeah, let's look at the picture first, okay? So you, um, uh, you yeah, let gamma be a T periodical uh, uh, parameterized curve, okay? So that, what does that mean? That means for some T, okay, for some T. So let's look at the image, okay? So this is a whole line, okay? This is a T, okay? This is a T plus capital T. Okay, let's look at the image because they're coincides. Okay, so that means if this is a this is a T, right, going that way and then come back, and this is the same. You know, after that, they're they are they actually uh, T and the T plus capital T. Uh, they're the same. You know, this is a so this is a gamma T that would be gamma T plus capital T, right? When T increases, just they all come together, okay? And they are the coincide and rotate. So this is actually, what you can see that is going to be, uh, what you can see that is the image, the image of gamma is a closed, right? Is a closed curve looks like, right? It's a closed curve, okay? And, uh, yeah, so we can, also, so in this case, 
a, a, a T periodic curve is also called a closed curve, okay? Because it looks like it's closed, you know, right? So here's the uh, here's definition. Uh, 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 a closed curve is a, is actually is a, is just a is a T periodic parameterized curve for some T, okay? Now we we will actually want to find out the smallest of a value t such that this holds because according to the above example t can be for the same image right the circle is, now the image of this circle a uh, image of this gamma is a circle right and uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, the gamma is a is a t periodical but t can be any of these numbers right so but they clearly you know two pi is the smallest positive number such uh, such uh, such that this holds, you know, this is a uh, this is a gamma t. Okay, okay. So now we introduce, uh, yeah, we uh, we introduce a definition. Okay, so uh, the period the period of a closed curve, okay, uh, gamma is the smallest positive integer. Now positive number, not integer, it's not necessarily integer. Positive number t such that gamma t equals gamma t plus capital T, because there are lots of t capital T there for any t. Okay. And this this is a this is a this is a uh, this is a uh, gamma t. Okay. All right. So look at this definition. Okay. Look at this definition. Okay. Look at this definition. Uh, and uh, and you just need to find the smallest value of t, right? Positive t. Okay. So this is a called uh, yeah period. Okay. That's a definition. So clearly, uh, clearly gamma t equals cosine t sine t, okay? The period, the period of gamma is two pi, okay? The period of gamma is two pi. But, and now we can even look at the more general, one, okay? We can even look at more general, it doesn't matter, right? So here's another one, gamma t equals you know, A cosine T and the B sine T, okay? And the A, B are, are, are positive number, A positive, B positive. And if you look, if you, if you, it's because both cosine T, sine T are functions, right? Uh, uh, you know, period of function. So clearly T plus two pi is gamma of T for any T, okay? Right, and uh, and uh, this t, uh, so the period of um, of this function uh, must be two pi. Okay, the period of this function is two pi. Now to prove this is not a, 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 a it, you have to say a few words why this is a two pi is the smallest positive in, uh, number such about such that the above identity holds okay and uh, and you do, do need to get proof right you know you cannot just obvious claim okay what you do that is yeah what you do is uh, using the above identity i can i can have the following capital t right and uh, this is a, a sign T plus capital T, and that is going to be A cosine T, B, so B sine T. So then, then T plus capital T is a cosine T, sine T plus capital T is a sine T. And the, this is a clearly implies T must be 2k pi, but we already know uh, 2 pi is a small, uh, 2 pi is a solution. So, so so that um, so the period must be the smallest among all those values of t. 
the, the smallest possible integer will be two pi, okay? The smallest positive number, okay, number, okay, is two pi. It's two pi. Okay. Uh, yeah. So now let's consider. Uh, we assume that gamma is a smooth, is a regular, okay, a closed curve, okay. Okay. Was period of pi. So it's so it's a close so the image, right? The image of gamma, you know, looks like a closed curve, right? The image is a, is indeed a, in the usual sense is a closed curve. Okay. Maybe like that, okay? <laughs> so it's reasonable when we're talking about the closed curve, what is the lens of a closed curve? You cannot you know, uh, yeah, it's reasonable to define the length of the closed curve to be uh, to be just the length of this piece within the period, right? From zero to t. So, so it is reasonable to define the length of gamma by the following formula. You don't need to, uh, yeah, you don't need to evaluate along the whole line. If you evaluate along the whole line, uh, this is gonna be infinity, okay? So we only need to consider that piece, okay? From here, you know, t equals zero, and then coming here, t equals capital T, that piece, okay? So that's called the length of the closed curve. You know, but note that, okay? If you want to find the integral of this, this is gonna be infinity, okay? And uh, and uh, it does not make sense, right? So the whole line as a map, okay? Uh, the, yeah, the, the length of the whole parametrized curve is gonna be infinity. The length of the whole parametrized curve is infinity, but the, the length of this, uh, the image of this, uh, Parametrized curve is is a finite. It's actually is this just the length of this one piece, okay? Uh, t from zero to, to capital T, okay? T from zero to capital T, okay? Right. So now let's consider the arc length, okay? It's the same function, okay? I'm going to consider this to be from zero to T. Okay, consider this function. Okay, so take a look at this function. Okay, so uh, clearly S zero is zero, right? When t equals zero. And S capital T is going, is going to be the length of this closed curve. Yeah, t equals capital T coming back here and t starts from zero, okay, right? So what happens when t, uh, when, you know, the derivative of this function, right, is gonna be gamma prime t. It's always positive, it's a regular. So it's an increasing function. So what do you end up with is, uh, uh, it's not gonna provide a function. So let me take a look at t capital T, okay? Capital T is a period of this parameter. So I'm going to take a look at this. Right? Okay. So where's the T capital T? Is this a T capital T actually? It's a rotating, uh, it's going to be rotated here and, and coming back to here, okay? Right? 
So I think it's obvious to see that. Now you can, yeah, you can take, uh, yeah, you separate this integral. Okay. However, uh, by, because the function is a periodical, now this is the length of a gamma, right? How about it's constant? How about this one? This one by, by substitution, you can let the tau to be uh, capital T plus, uh, plus U, okay? And then, um, then this will be integral from zero to T and gamma U and uh, gamma, uh, yeah. Gamma u, yeah, that's right, du, okay? Because tau, yeah, gamma prime tau is gamma prime t capital U because it's a periodic function, so the derivative is also periodic because that's the reference, okay? So that's why this is a nothing but uh, st, okay? So st, this is an arc lens function, is not going to be periodic function, but it's like increasing, you know? Yeah, it's in some sense, it's like a periodically increasing, but it's not going to be the original value, okay? Then it's from the picture, you can easy to see that, right? From the picture, it's easy to see that. Uh, so this is a right, from the picture, it's easy to see that S of T is going to be the length of this piece coming to here. So this is a, let's assume this T zero, right? And uh, that's a T, right? So this is also, uh, T plus capital T, okay? Then uh, the, the length of the curve from zero to, to T plus capital T is the length of this cross curve plus the length from zero to T, okay? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Now there are some functions their functions, uh, their, their parameters curves, uh, it's not periodical, but somehow, yeah, let's look at an example. Uh, this is a gamma, okay? It's mapped to the space. So that is gonna be the image. It's possible like that, right? So in this case, uh, there's, a, there's a self intersection point. This is called self intersection point. Okay, self intersection point. This is gamma. Okay, so uh, self intersection point at the point of P, and uh, if uh, if uh, if uh, how do you define? It's very simple, right? If you can have uh, uh, when t equals a, when t equals b, that's the same. Gamma a equals gamma b. A is not equal to b, okay? If, uh, yeah, it has a self-intersection point, okay? If, uh, if this is true, right? That's it's easy, easy to describe. Of course, the function, uh, um, we have to also have to, Yeah, this is a general definition, right? Now, what, how how do we say uh, it's a how do we say it's a, it's a periodic function? Okay, if it's a periodic function, and then uh, then uh, how can I describe the self intersection point? Right. So what happens is like that. Right. Right. Mm, no, going this way. Okay, this is a period, this is a closed curve. Okay, and uh, with, a, with a period of pi of, of t, right? So how can I describe that point? If I just say gamma a equals gamma b for some a b, then for the periodic function, this is always true, right? So, so that point, okay, and uh, I have to say I have to I have to say that a is a, 
uh, a minus b cannot be a multiple on uh, the multiple of uh, of the of the of the period okay so uh, a minus b where a that must be cannot be k p if gamma is closed yeah i really want to talk about the self intersection point okay i'm not going to talk about the same point you know and uh, you know it's coming back you see it's periodic function you always have like that a plus t equals gamma for a right for any a. then you say okay so every point on the curve is a is a self-intersection point no right so we have to exclude that case right this is always true if i do not put this restriction okay if i do not put this restriction then uh yeah you can put any k here right you know yeah this is always true so i want to make sure b is not in the formula like a plus kt okay and that uh, really tells you the uh, p is going to be the uh, self intersection point okay that's you know you can define that but sometimes we forget this part just say okay for some two different values a and b gamma a equals gamma b therefore this is a self intersection point but this is not the exact you know if it's a periodic function then by this definition every point on the curve is a self intersection we want to exclude that case that we only have you know, yeah okay so that's the uh, self intersection point i can call the definition i just trying to explain to you the definition okay yeah that's some um uh, uh there are some uh, uh, uh there's some curves okay it a periodic function some curves have a, a self-intersection point some uh, does not have okay uh depends on uh yeah so you are given an exercise to do this uh to do this yeah so but example I want to show here is gamma t equals a cosine t, b sine t, a, b are positive, okay? And the, this one, I have to say that it does not have self intersection point. And it's true, you know, if you look at the image, it's, it's an ellipse, okay? The image of gamma is an ellipse. Right? It's the ellipse. Yeah, you can describe it. Uh, and if you let x equal to a to be cosine t, y equals b sine t, right? Then you would get you get x over a square plus y over b square equals one. So this, this is a, a typical uh, you know e equation for the ellipse, right? So this is the ellipse, and uh, it does not have self intersection point. Right? Yeah, it does not have self-intersection. And you can prove that directly. Just say if it has self-intersection point, and then it's because it's closed curve, you end up with a, um, uh, those two values. Uh, now, for example, if you can prove without picture, if you can say, if gamma one equal, uh, gamma two equal T2, then you can show that, okay, then, t2 minus t1 must be equal to k to pi okay and uh, and uh, but we said that uh if it's closed the difference of those two numbers cannot be a multiple t okay so that's why uh there is no uh self-intersection point okay okay self-intersection point okay right now Many uh, many curves are, are level curves in the xy plane. Okay, many curves, many curves um, uh, are two are level curves. Okay, for example, the ellipse. Okay, this curve described by by this equation, okay, C, okay, C is a level curve, okay, C is a 
level curve of the function f x y, okay, which is going to be x square a x plus y square b square. Okay, C is a level curve, right? It's a level one. Okay, f equals one. So in other words, C is going to be x and y, f of x and y equals one. Okay, so we can define. Yeah, there are many curves are defined by an equation. Like that. Okay. Okay. Uh, what I want to talk about is, is an important theorem. So when the level curve is indeed uh, is a curve, is a curve in our the sense it's the image of a uh, 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 parameter as a curve, okay? Yeah, given level curve, you know, it's not always the image of level curve. For example, uh, for a given arbitrary, function, ff, okay? And f of x, y equals k, the image could be sometimes could be like that, and sometimes could be like that, sometimes like this, okay? So, so it's not necessarily, you know, sometimes it could be a, you know, it could be a, 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 yeah, sometimes could be like that. So, so it's not necessarily to define a, a smooth curve, okay? It's not necessarily the, the level curve is, is the image of, of a, of a parameter's curve, a regular parameter's curve. Like in this case, it's impossible, you know, it's a cross of, of two lines, okay, two curves. Uh, what I want to show, show is, is the following theorem I want to explain, okay. The theorem says that, Uh, we assume that uh, the f is a smooth function, okay? All we need is actually the derivative, partial derivative exists, okay? f, okay? Uh, actually, is a, is a defined uh, on an open domain. Uh, omega in R2, first of all, okay? Then we have the level, you know, this is a C, okay? And the C is gonna be X and Y as in the domain, right? And it's determined by, by some equation like that, okay? We, uh, Okay, what I want to say, yeah, we assume that uh, f is um, f is uh, is differentiable. Okay, many times. Okay, we can we can call that is a smooth function. Okay, smooth function. We have to assume that smooth function. Smooth function. Okay. Now we needed to assume the following. Okay. If uh, Suppose that okay, I take a point here, x0, y0. Suppose that they're not both equal to zero. Okay, that means they're not both all equal to zero at the same time. Okay. Then, okay. Then uh, okay. 
Then there is a, a parametrized curve. There is a regular. parameterize the curve gamma from uh, from an interval, I just said negative short positive short, okay? And into, into the omega, okay? Such that Yeah, I need also a small, a small neighborhood, the omega prime, okay, such that, yeah, and, uh, yeah, let me describe it. You know, in this small neighborhood, it looks like a curve, okay, and uh, a smaller, uh, small neighborhood. neighborhood omega planet at that point, okay, such that, okay, such that this curve C in this neighborhood is going to be the image of gamma, okay, clear. So that, what does that mean? That means uh, at that particular point, Okay, I can find a smaller neighborhood omega such that the in, such that the, the the level curve inside this neighborhood, okay, is going to be the image of a gamma some interval. Okay, and the gamma zero is going to be x and y. Zero. Okay, this is a. Okay, so 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 you when you when you look at you know this is level curve and you look at the point okay. If there is a point the, the partial derivatives not all not all equal to zero, then in this small neighborhood, the level curve, if you zone in, okay, this is indeed a, a, a image of some regular parameterized curve. Okay. Because this is a this is what I want to talk about. Okay. And uh, uh, conversely, every Every level, uh, regular curve, its image can be viewed as uh, in a small neighborhood, okay? It can be viewed as a level curve, okay? We can also prove this. But this is the most important thing, okay? So level curve, sometimes when we define level curve, we want to make sure it is, uh, it is uh, uh, indeed a, a regular curve, you know, not the, right? For example, uh, like x to the, uh, two over three plus y to two over three. Look at this level curve. Okay, defined by this. Okay, okay, and uh, whether this is every point, whether this is a, and this is going to be, uh, you know, uh, this at every point on the curve, on this curve, whether this is going to be image of regular parameterized, image of regular parameterized curve, parameterized curve, and maybe not, right? So here, but if you look at the picture, the picture probably looks like that, okay? So you are gonna have a trouble with those points. Okay, this, those points, it's its neighborhood. Uh, this cannot be uh, the, uh, the image of a regular parameter's curve, okay? But somewhere here, it's okay. Somewhere here, it's okay. Locally, it's indeed, a, is the image of that. Uh, a regular parameterized curve. Regular means it's small, you know, it's not, okay? All right, so um, yeah, take a look at this function. Yeah, before I prove that theorem, let's understand this, okay? So this is going to be x two thirds plus y to the two thirds. And let's look at the parameter, uh, uh, let's look at the partial derivative. Two thirds x to the negative one third, right? And uh, Right, and uh, clearly the partial derivative doesn't exist. Either. Okay, when either x equals zero or uh, when uh, or y equals zero. Okay, so the partial the partial derivative. Okay, 
this partial derivative does not exist at x equals zero or y equals zero, right? Either one, you know, both, okay, well, you know. So that means I even cannot talk about uh, whether this nearby that point, you know, you have a x equals zero, y equals zero, those are four points, okay? X also, you have two vertical points, y equals zero, they have two horizontal points. So those uh, uh, exclude those four points, okay? Then the curve defined by the equation is going to be the regular curve, are going to be the image of, uh, yeah, so C minus those four points, okay? Zero uh, plus minus one, okay? And the plus minus one, zero. Exclude those four points. Okay. Uh, this is a, is a, uh, uh, this one it consists of four regular curves. That means the image of, the image of, of a regular parametrized map. Parametrized curve. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, actually, you can solve it directly in this particular case. Okay. So directly. Okay. So let's take a look at this again. So we exclude this four points. Okay. We exclude those four points. Okay. Yeah, we exclude those four points first. Uh, okay, let's take a look at the point here. Now let's take this whole piece, any point on this piece, right? So I'm going to solve for that, okay? So we assume that X is positive, Y is positive in the first quadrant. Then I'm going to get, right? Then I can square it, oops. Okay, then the y is going to be and uh, three over two. Okay, so this is a uh, well defined. Yeah, x is between and the x is between one and the uh, right x is between one and the zero, and uh, then uh, and the, this is a graph, right, of a function. So that piece is a graph function. Of course, it's curved. Okay, gamma t can be defined to be t and the one minus TO3. No, it's not one minus T, just, yeah, one minus, yeah, this is going to be three over uh, two, okay? And T is between zero and the one, okay? Why we cannot do that? Why we can do that? Because the partial derivative around this function. It's not going to be zero, neither of them. Along this curve, it's not going to be zero. Okay. But for this specific problem, I can, uh, I can even find a parametrization for that whole piece. Okay, the function is differentiable. This is a, this is a, this is small, okay? It's differentiable. But I cannot find a regular map. Uh, I cannot find this is a closed curve, right? If you include in the four vertexes, but I cannot find the regular uh, periodic parametrization for this closed curve. Okay, and only for that small piece. So we cannot find a periodic regular uh, parametrized parametrized curve gamma for for the entire closed curve C okay without 
excluding this four vertex. Okay. We can only find. So the level curves, they are curves in generalized sense, and there are singular points on that sometimes. Okay. And exclude those singular points, then for each piece, I can find a regular parameterized curve to describe it. Okay. Okay. So in this case, you have four, four, uh, I have a four uh, singular points on the curve. Okay. Okay. All right, so how do we find the, yeah. So let's uh, prove the, let's prove the theorem. Prove the, of the, of the theorem, okay? So we, uh, we assume that, now by assumption, right? By assumption, this is not going to be zero, right? So the two components here, I can assume that without loss of generality, okay? We may, uh, let's assume, okay, let's assume that, okay? Now, <laughs> what's the meaning of this? What's the meaning of this? This is a curve, okay? Actually, uh, yeah, the, the, this general argument, okay? So actually, this is going to be the level curve. So, so uh, if you look at uh, this vector, actually, is a normal vector to the, in some sense, to this curve. Okay, to this curve. Okay, it's a normal vector. So when this is not going to be zero, then. Uh, when this is not going to be zero, that means the normal vector is not a perpendicular. Yeah, this means N is not, yeah, let's call it N, okay? N is not parallel, not a horizontal, okay? It's not a horizontal. Yeah, it's not a parallel to, to the X axis, okay? So that means it's not horizontal. If it's not horizontal, and then uh, then nearby, here's the point. Okay, nearby this, uh, we should have a unique for each x close to x naught. Okay. Yeah. There was a so-called inverse theorem. Okay, we're not going to go through that detail. Just, just look at the picture. If they so just accept this theorem. If X is close to uh, this, then go up because the curve is, this is kind of, you know, very close to the tangent line. This is a tangent line to that point. So there's a, so the vertical line at x intersect c at a unique point. Okay, that unique point, the first component is x, second component I'm going to denote by, yeah, I can denote by, uh, by, by something depends on depends on X, okay? Let's say call it X. So therefore you get 
That's a unique point, okay? So this is just a rough idea. Then, uh, then uh, uh, then C nearby the point X0, Y0 is going to be the graph of the function graph of G, okay? So of course this you can you can uh, this can be the image of the of some uh, regular parameterization, okay? Then uh, and uh, and uh, it is the image of gamma t and t and g of t, okay? So that's it. So this is a rough idea, the sketch for that, uh, and. Uh, Uh, when I, yeah, when I, I want to go back, you know, to this, assuming, okay, assuming uh, gamma t is a parameterization of C, okay, okay, so we assume, this is the end of the so we assume, okay, so f c is going to be uh, f x y is going to be k, right, and uh, we have a point on the curve. Okay. We we always assume that uh, the partial derivative is not going to be the zero of them. Okay. Then uh, let gamma from negative infinity shown to the C. Okay, such that. So this is a C, okay, I have a gamma here. Suppose, yeah, uh, this is X, okay. We assume this is a, exists, okay, this is a regular function. So that means, okay, that means gamma, t, yeah, let gamma t to be X, T, Y, T, right? Okay. So, because the image is on the C, so that's why f of gamma, uh, x t y t should be always equal to constant k, right? Then you differentiate both sides. Mm -hmm. Then you differentiate both sides, what do you get? So we differentiate both sides, you get partial derivative and uh, here is x t y t and x prime t, right? And plus so then you set t to be zero, right? And you get x prime zero plus now remember uh, uh, this is the inner product, right? So the inner product of of these two vectors. And this one is x prime y prime, actually is gamma prime zero equals zero, okay? So this is a tangent of that, tangent vector, right? So this is a tangent vector to that curve. And I have another vector perpendicular to that. So, uh, so this is an N, right? This is an N. So that's why N is, a, N is should be the, should be the normal vector. Right? Normal vector means it's perpendicular to the tangent. tangent vector. So this actually, for level curve, 
This is actually called a gradient. We call the gradient. Okay. The gradient of the function is a, is a normal vector, is perpendicular to the tangent vector of the level curve. Okay, right. let's take a look at some examples. Okay, let's take examples. F of x so y equals x squared plus y squared. Okay. Right. Now, uh, then n at any point is going to be partial derivative, right? And when you differentiate, it's two x, two y, okay? So this is just a twice of, of that vector. Okay, so if you look at the picture, okay, if you look at the picture, f of x, y equals constant k. Or maybe I use a uh, r square for some r. And it's much easier to understand. Okay. So the level curve, yeah, of this, right, is actually the circle with the radius r. Okay, this i is the radius. So at an arbitrary point on this level curve, so the gradient of f is going to be double, is going to be double the length, okay, double the, uh, uh, the fact from zero to the to from origin to that point. Okay. So this is a gradient. It's perpendicular. Yeah. Okay. So the gradient of f at the point x, which is n, that's going to be twice of of that back. And it's getting big and big. But anyway, it's perpendicular to yeah. Perpendicular to to the circle C, okay, determined by uh, determined by by this uh, equation, okay. Because okay, those are the problems, right? Now. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at example, another example, hyperbolic curves. Okay, x squared over, over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals one, right? A and b are both the positive numbers. Okay. Well, uh, we know the, the graph. The graph, how do you, how do you describe the graph? Okay. Uh, how to describe this? Yeah. I think when y is zero, x has the intersection point, positive and negative a. So the graph passing through those two points when y is zero. Okay. And, uh, and uh, this should be like that. No intersection with the y axis. So if x equals zero, and no solution for the y. So you got two solutions. So this, uh, this is a disjoint, okay? Those two pieces are disconnect, okay? Uh, not a connect, okay? So the graph of C and uh, F of X, Y equals one. Yeah, so let's see, I'm going to let F of X, Y to be X squared over A squared minus Y squared over B squared. And this is not connect, okay? So it's not always, you know, the level curve is, is, is connect, okay? The level curve is not, a, is not connect, okay? It's not necessary to be connected. Right, it is not a connect. But it consists of two regular curves. How do you how do you see that before you solve it? Okay, so C 
consists of two regular curves, smooth curves. Okay, differentiable. You know, smooth means it's a, it's not a it's a differentiable. Okay. Smooth curves. And then if you draw the picture, okay, it's obvious. Okay. But if you don't draw the picture, how can you see that? All I needed to prove is to make sure, suppose you cannot draw it, okay? If you don't have a computer, you cannot draw it. You cannot see it. But you just look at the equation. How do you know? You guarantee it. Get always get uh, regular curves, okay? Because when you differentiate, let's look at this N, okay? The gradient of F. Right, you look at this. Uh, look at this. Okay, and this is going to be the. Uh, it's going to be two a square x, two y. It's negative, right? right? Well, this can be zero, right? But clearly, this is going to be zero if and only if x equals zero, y equals zero, right? Otherwise, it's not going to be zero. But for any point x and y on this curve C. And that cannot be zero because you look at the equation, right? Right? So x and y is not going to be zero. That's obvious. Because if it's zero, they're not going to be on the point. It's not on the curve, okay? okay. The origin is not on the curve because f of zero is gonna be zero. It's not gonna be one. So that's why this origin is not on the curve. So if we pick up a point on the curve and there's a gradient it's never be zero. So that's why, uh, that's why, the, that's why C is, a, C is a regular curve, but maybe disconnect, okay? This shows that C is a regular curve. Okay, regular, regular means a smooth, you know. Yeah, when we say regular, usually including smoothness, okay. Regular curve, but it's, but uh, the theorem does not guarantee you have a single uh, regular parametrism curve to cover whole C. Possibly you have a two, okay, just like a parameter, right? So it's not necessarily, you know, the theorem only guarantee every point, every point on C, there's a small neighborhood, which is can be the image of, uh, which is can be the image of, uh, of a, a regular perimeter of the curve. Okay, only a small neighborhood at that point. Okay. Uh, it does not guarantee you can find the one, one regular perimeter of the curve whose image is the whole C, okay? So we never say that, okay? It's the only local version of that thing. That thing is only local version, okay? So in this particular case, you know, you, you, you have a two separate components. There's no way you can find the one, okay? So you can easily you can see that, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, this is a regular curve consisting can exist in two pieces. To connect to the curves. Okay. Now there is a, a homework on the There is a homework, they ask you to find out uh, why this is uh, not connected, okay? And uh, I think it's easy to see why it's not connected. For what range of the variable T, this is a, uh, uh, yeah, this is a, uh, well, I'm not gonna talk about this problem. In the, uh, as a homework, okay? But I want to look at the next example, okay? So the curve, 
C is determined by y squared equals x cubed. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Okay. Okay, let's discuss this example. Okay, so this can be viewed as a level curve. Okay, so C is going to be X and Y, F of X and Y equals zero, and F of X is going to be Y squared minus X cubed, right? Okay. Yeah, let's look at this one, whether this is a regular curve or not. Okay, and find, find, can we find a parameterization of it? Okay. So the whole line, okay? So the partial, the gradient of F is gonna be a partial derivative Okay, this is going to be negative three x squared. That's two y. Okay. So clearly, this is zero if and only if x and y both are zero. Okay. It's only at its origin, this is going to be zero. Okay. So the origin is a trouble point. Okay. So that means. This is not going to zero for any x and y uh, on c, okay? Which is not a minus the origin, okay? So the curve c deletes the origin, then the gradient is not going to zero, okay? So by the theorem, okay, c should be. Okay, locally, uh, you know, everywhere it's curve, your image of the parameter curve. Okay. okay. So, yeah, you know, the, it's by the theorem for any x not right. Uh, on C, as long as it is not the origin, okay? Okay, so this is C, right? Then you can cover it, okay? There's a small neighborhood Okay, such that C and the intersection with this neighborhood is is the image of the parameter curve, is a regular parameter curve, is the image of a regular parameterized curve. Okay, that, that's guaranteed, that doesn't mean you can solve it. And uh, I'm going to solve it. It's, it's easy to solve it, right? So well, I have two options. C is going to be X. I think X cannot be negative. Okay, X cannot be negative. Clearly, this implies X cannot be negative. And this is going to be three over two. Okay, and that is plus minus in general. You have two solutions, right? Plus minus. Okay. Yeah. So it depends, right? So for for a point on C, you know, we 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 miss, and and then of course C is not going to be uh, uh, this is not going to be the origin. Then in price. X naught is going to is going to be positive, okay. Otherwise, it's a zero and the Y is also zero, right? And uh, that's the first thing. So, 
if y zero is positive, then you can get that solution. Okay. If y naught is negative, then y is going to be negative three over two. Okay. So what does that mean? That means uh, uh, C can see, after you delete the origin, C consists two pieces, each of them are uh, even the graph of function, okay? And, and of course, it's gonna be image of, uh, of, uh, of a regular parametric curve, okay? okay? So C minus origin consists of Two consists of a two graphs of regular function. Two graphs of okay. Okay. of course they are you know they're regular curves, right? Smooth function. Okay. So if you look at the picture, it looks like that. Actually, you have to delete the point. <laughs> All right, so the level curve, the whole level curve has a single point. And after you remove that, and they consist of two pieces. Okay, each of them is actually the graph of the function. Okay. And uh, not only graph of function, you know, then, uh, yeah, it's graph of function. Then using graph of function, using, using the function, you can define uh, uh, you can define gamma, you know, gamma positive T is going to be T, T is three over two, okay? T is a positive to the positive infinity. For that piece, gamma negative T, T and the T to the negative three over two, okay? Okay, so this uh, level curve uh, is covered by two regular parameterized curves, okay? It cannot be covered by one single regular parameterized curve. And that curve actually has a single point. You cannot talk about single point, but single point is a really interesting point, okay? So, so for, for a single point, you cannot even talk about curvature, okay? But for, for, for a regular point, okay? And you can describe the curvature later then we're going to do that in the next class okay yes so those are the examples and uh we are familiar with this kind of curves right so that's how i use these examples to discuss the concept okay okay so let's stop here